Hey y'all, welcome back, or hello, if this is your first time. Today I'm gonna go over how I make my homemade burrito bowls. It's kind of a long video because there are a lot of moving parts. So for cilantro lime rice, I have water, long grain parboiled, parboiled rice, cilantro, limes, lime juice, lime zest, um, mint cilantro. And then for the queso, I have cream cheese, white Velveeta, um, diced tomatoes, jalapenos, and a can of green chilies, also uh, half and half for the queso. I'm also gonna make some hot corn salsa. That is one can of Southwestern corn, a can of fire roasted corn, a can of Rotel, um, a diced, just a little bit of diced red onion, and I think some garlic as well. That's for the corn salsa. I'm also gonna make some sauteed black beans. That's just black beans, a can of green chilies, and a diced jalapeno. For the fajita veggies, I'm gonna char red onion and a few bell peppers. I think it's orange and red in there. And the protein of choice for these bowls is jalapeno lime chicken and crispy fajita jackfruit. Um, that's the chicken you see marinating there with the garlic and the jalapeno. And then that's pulled jackfruit that you see that's been seasoned and tossed with a serrano pepper. So for the jalapeno lime chicken, we start by making the marinade. It is about a fourth of a cup of olive oil. You can use whatever oil you want really, as well as a ton of minced garlic, some fresh jalapeno, some lime juice, and a hefty amount of my fajita spice blend. I will link the recipe in the caption. I'm gonna link the recipes for every single thing you see here in the caption, of course, um, or in the video description, I should say. This is an Instagram, it's not a caption. After I have all that whisked together into a marinade, I prep my chicken. So I'm using boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I'm just gonna cut them into cutlets. You can use boneless, skinless thighs if that's what you want. Um, it doesn't really matter. I prefer breasts over any other cut of meat. So that's what you're always gonna see me using here. But yeah, I cut them into cutlets and then I work them into the marinade. I wanna make sure that each piece is well covered and well seasoned. Now for the crispy fajita jackfruit, I start with a can of young jackfruit. It's important to get young jackfruit. Jackfruit is a fruit. The older it gets, the more mature it gets, the more it comes into its own. It becomes sweet, it becomes starchy. We don't want that. Young jackfruit is really mild. And as you can see, when you push it apart or kind of break it apart, it looks like pulled chicken, very similarly to pulled chicken. You can use a wooden spoon or like a, probably an electric hand mixer to do this. I prefer to use my hands. I just feel like that works the best. I know it's weird. You can tell by the look on my face that I don't like shit on my hands, but it works the best. After you have it all broken up, you're going to add lime juice, the fajita spice blend, as well as a diced serrano pepper and just enough oil, just plain vegetable oil to help the seasoning adhere to the jackfruit. The jackfruit is also, it came in water. If you get one that is in some sort of brine, you'll probably want to rinse that off, but it's up to you. Cooking the jackfruit is really simple. We're gonna add a drizzle of vegetable oil to a hot pan. The pan's been preheating for about two minutes. When I add the jackfruit to the pan, I try to spread it out into an even layer, and then I just let it cook. I come back every two to three minutes or so and give it a good stir and toss. But really, it's it's just a matter of letting it cook um, until it dries out. It takes generally about 10 minutes or so over medium-high heat. And when the jackfruit is crispy around the edges and has deepened to like like a light brown, Go ahead and remove it from the heat. It's time to work on everything else, starting with the rice. So this is about, about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of oil. So we're gonna start on our queso. So we will add the Velveeta and the cream cheese, our milk, these are fire roasted tomatoes and our jalapenos. And give it a stir. 
And then we're gonna cover it and leave it alone. It's covered. And we're gonna toast our rice. Just gonna stir that around until it gets nice and toasty. of salt. Then give it a slight stir. And we're going to bring this to a boil. And then I'm also going to go ahead and work on our black beans. I'm going to add about a teaspoon or so of water. If you don't drain your beans, you won't need to do that. And we're gonna take just a tad of the fajita seasoning. I'm also gonna add a little bit more salt, because I use beans that are unsalted. Now we are just gonna get our beans nice and sauteed. Then I'm going to just put it over here, put it to this burner back here, and then I'm going to turn my oven on to its lowest setting, which is like 170 something. This is just warm. We're gonna char, make sure that pan is like super hot. So I'm going to add just a bit of salt to them, not too much, just enough to uh, make them sweat. Now this is come to a boil, so we are going to cover her, reduce her to a simmer here, give or take, and we're going to work on everything else. Let's check on our queso. Now we're gonna wanna stir the queso occasionally. It is definitely gonna take some time to heat up. So. natural sweetness of the corn and take away a little bit of the acidity that the tomatoes might have. Give it one more good stir and now we're done. So I was wearing a mic so that you guys could hear me because my voice doesn't carry very well. It fell off and you can't hear anything I'm saying for the rest of the video. So voiceover it is. Um, but basically I was saying that you should keep an eye on the beans and the queso, give them a stir ever so often. They're both cooking on low heat. So um, it's not really a risk of them burning, but they can dry out and the texture can change. Um, but yeah, keep an eye on those while you're cooking everything else. Now the chicken marinated for about two hours 
and then I'm going to add it directly to the same pan that I cooked the veggies and the corn salsa in. I didn't add any oil or anything to the pan. I just preheated it over medium high heat for about two minutes before I added the chicken. Then I just cooked the chicken, turning it occasionally until I'm happy with the color on the outside and it is cooked through. I cooked this for, I'm gonna say about 15 minutes total. Once the chicken is cooked through, I transferred it to a cutting board to rest. Let it rest for about 10 minutes so that it doesn't lose all the juice. I'm gonna dice it up the way that Chipotle does. Then it's just a matter of finishing the queso and the rice. So I test the rice to make sure it is done and cooked through. It is, so I'm gonna remove the lime wedges and the cilantro stems that I cooked it with. And then I'm gonna cover the rice and let it steam. I'm gonna take it off the burner because I don't need that heat anymore, but I'm gonna let the residual heat help um, any leftover liquid kind of evaporate. Now I let the queso simmer uncovered for a bit to thicken up and that's because I used half and half instead of heavy cream, which my recipe calls for heavy cream. So half and half is a little looser, so that's why I needed to do that. Um, but when I'm happy with it, I go ahead and go back to the rice. Now it's time to grab a fork and add in the, the lime juice as well as the lime zest and the mint cilantro. I'm gonna use a fork to work that through all of the rice. And then we're done. Now it's time for us to build or to assemble the burrito bowls. To build the bowls, you're gonna create a bed of cilantro lime rice. You wanna pick a like a pasta bowl like this, something that's wide and shallow. Add just the rice. Some people like to put lettuce here. I'm not a fan of hot lettuce, so I leave that for the top. And then after the rice is there, you're gonna drizzle on just a bit of queso, not too much. And then we're going to pile on a lot of chicken or jackfruit, whatever you decided to use. But we don't have to pay for an extra scoop. And we're also not going to get in trouble with our manager if we give somebody too much chicken. So add a lot of chicken directly to the center. We add it to the middle and that way we can add all the other um, things that we cooked around the sides of it. And that way you can tell what's in the bowl just from looking at it. It's not just all like stacked on top of each other. But beside the chicken, you're gonna put the charred veggies and then the hot corn salsa and then our sauteed black beans. After you've added all of this, you're gonna come in with your cold toppings. For me, that's gonna be lettuce, also pico de gallo. That recipe is also on deeperandhoney.com as well as shredded Monterey Jack cheese. You can use whatever kind of cheese you want to use, but I prefer Monterey Jack on this bowl. And then you want to finish it with queso. Or you can add a little bit more chicken if you're like me and you just want to do that. Um, but then you're going to finish it with hefty drizzles of queso. I'm going to get queso on everything because it's one of the best parts, right? And also we didn't have to pay like $1.50 to get more queso added to our bowl. Anyway, now I'm done. So these bowls are quite a lot of work. But in the end, I feel like it's really worth it. I will link all of the recipes in the video description box, of course. And if you made it this far, I have so much appreciation for you. This was a very long video. I hope you have a great rest of your day today. Bye.